in terms of what? In terms of the terms that the document has, which is called as EF term frequency. Uh, in when I asked this question, he was going. Uh, he gave an answer on number something like order. He said order. I think what you meant was the number of times the word is uttered rather than order. You did not phrase it well, but that's why I asked you more. So this is basically what is called as term frequency in this literature. What we do is that we find out these two measures. This is known as the term vector or term weight of the document. And then we compute similarity for two documents. Let's see how we do this with an example. And in search engine, we're talking about search engine, right? So we don't have two documents here. Here, let's take this to be query. Let's take this to be document. As I said, query is also now considered as a bag of words. So let's suppose this is query vector and this is document vector. And now we find the cosine similarity. So how do we weight the document terms? The intuition is, and it all, it's all coming from intuition. No big science there. Just by chance. You can come up with your own idea and it can create a revolution in the field. Uh, terms that appear often in a document should get high weights. True. A document that has the term Karachi a lot of times is of course more relevant to the term Karachi than a document which has the term Mumbai most, most of the time. And then terms that appear in many documents should get low weights. That is appearing very, very frequently in the, the whole document corpus. For example, some stock words, but we remove stock words. Okay. So how do we capture this mathematically? We use term frequency and then there is another inverse document frequency. And why inverse document frequency? I'll explain. So we have uh, this model. The UIJ, the term vector, the term base is fine. This is the weight assigned to term I in document J. Term I in document J for and we find the term weight for all the terms in the document. What we do is that we find TFIJ. TFIJ is number of occurrence of term I in document J. We count how many times that particular for example, let's say we have a document. Uh, the same old, the quick, brown, fox, oh, etc. So, this is the document, x, k for fox, we are finding. How many times it occurs? One. So, our t, f, i for fox is one. And then, number of documents in the entire collection is n. Number of documents with the term i. Suppose we don't have just one document, we have hundreds such documents and fox is appearing in 20 of them. So ni would be 20. So this is what we find. This is this whole thing is known as TFIDF. Okay, so we find the term weight according to this, uh, this formulation. Why term weight? Do you, what do you understand by term weight? In the Boolean model, if you go back, What did we do? We just assigned 0, 1. And you said that this is not counting how many times it occurs. No importance to that because a problem with this approach. But now the TF IDF takes this into account by the TF. But there is one more catch. What if uh, a long document, a long document is bound to have the term more number of times than a short document. So the shorter document is penalized. Should it be? Should a document be penalized uh, for length? I think no. Because a shorter document may also be more relevant. Relevance is not proportional to length here. So that's why the IDF thing. Here, we got TF. Okay, this is understandable. This is ideal. This comes 
to remove the penalty of short documents. What this, what the beauty of the IDF thing is that if a long document has the term has the term many number of times, that document uh, is the term data is distributed over the length of that document. So that's the beauty of the term PF IDF term weighting. So okay. Uh, I think we'll take a break here and then we'll solve an example of this. Uh, if there are any questions, you can ask. <laughs> um, you said A was uh, uh, an approach after Alta Vista used, which failed also for Google. Mm -hmm. which, is, which is that? The page rank. Page rank. No, no, you are asking about the approach that Alta Vista used. Alta Vista's approach was this one. This one. Earlier, before page rank, every search engine was using the TF IDF mechanic. So, page rank is the one which failed after this one? No, no, it did not fail. It succeeded. It was a great success in 1999. Actually, the thing is, before page rank, uh, people were looking for, I mean, just imagine the history. I mean, you are in the history, in the point of history, and you have so many data before you, and you don't know how to retrieve information from that data. So your prime concern is show me the information. So you you naturally would come up with Boolean model, right? Where 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 does this term exist? Just tell me those portions, right? Then the second time you might be saying, oh, it's too huge list which I could process because there are so many matches. Show me some of the important ones first and order it some way. So you say, I'm writing some uh, query which is reflective of a paragraph, not a word, but a paragraph. Show me that part. So it says, uh, for example, this paragraph matches near about 90% uh, with your query. This one matches 80% with your query, and so on and so forth. This approach is actually reflective of TFID. Later on, on the web, uh, there were people who know, who want to get attention of those who are placing the queries. And you may call them spammers. They started populating uh, several keywords in order to get the, themselves on the top of search engine for some queries. At that point of time, there was another problem. How can we just rely on this thing? Then came up the page ranks idea, which was not based upon these similarities. I mean, TF IDF kind of a thing. I was based upon uh, in links. How many links do you receive from other web pages? It's kind of a voting thing. So how many votes do you receive from different parts of the World Wide Web? If you, retrieve, if you receive many, then you ought to be important. And if there is a match, a proper match, what is a proper match? Maybe a boolean, maybe uh, a limit. A limit means like 0 0.6 to 0 0.8 for whatever with TF, TFIDF, it's up to the commercial company. So if there is such thing like that, then they apply this voting mechanism and then they declare the winner, which, which is the most important one. So when they released the page rank philosophy, it was a pure success because all the spammers who were just populating irrelevant or non-regular keywords in order to get the attention uh, 